Hello everyone, welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I move on to the first question, if you haven't subscribed to our channel then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up you can be notified about the same. You can also join our telegram group, the link is in the description below. Free PDFs of these sessions will be provided to you on that very group. So moving on to the first question now, it says, who has been appointed as the chairman of National Asset Reconstruction Company? So I hope you are aware about the NARCL, okay? And we also have another firm called IDRCL. So NARCL, IDRCL is the bad bank structure which was suggested for India, okay? So recently, uh, this very bad bank structure has made certain new appointments of the chairman, of the chief executives. So we are going to discuss about those new appointments here. Okay, so the answer to this question that who has been appointed as the chairman of NARCL is option A, Mr. Pradeep Shah. Let's discuss a bit more about the various new appointments. So if I talk about the bad bank structure, the government suggested a twin structure for resolving the distressed assets. So India made twin structure suggest kiya gaya tha bad banks ka jo hamare distressed assets ko resolve karne mein help karega. There is a growing problem of NPAs in India. To address that problem, to resolve various distressed assets, this bad bank is going to help a lot. Although we have private asset reconstruction companies, but this uh, asset reconstruction company will help more in resolving the problem of distressed assets. And it has obviously the government backing. So the bad bank structure involves setting up of NARCL and IDRCL. Okay, we have discussed about this various times. Okay, NARCL will have the task of acquiring the bad assets at a fair value from the lenders. So NARCL bad loans to him, so bad assets hai, wo dega lenders se, and then IDRCL will be resolving them. It will provide a, a fair resolution of the assets. So un ko kaise manage karna hai, jin lenders se wo loans karide hai, Un companies ko kaise manage karna hai ya fir unke assets sell off karne hai whatever the procedure is to be followed to resolve the distress assets recover the money that will be the task of IDRCL. So NARCL and IDRCL will work to it, together towards resolving the distress assets. The asset reconstruction company license has been issued to the NARCL but the regulator that is RBI is yet to permit IDRCL to start operations. So soon that will also begin. So moving ahead now to the new appointments which have been made. So as we have discussed in the question, Mr. Pradeep Shah has been appointed as the chairman of NARCL. So he was the founder of a firm which dealt in the uh, provide which dealt in providing the advisory services related to different strategic alliances, mergers, acquisitions, joint ventures. So he was the founder of IND Asia Fund Advisors, which was basically an advisory firm related to strategic alliances. Other than that, the new chairman of IDRCL has also been appointed. Who is he? He is Mr. Devakar Gupta, who was the former MD of State Bank of India. Iske alawa, IDRCL ki chief executive ki bhi appointment hui hai. So the chief executive of your IDRCL has also been appointed and he is Mr. Sanjay Jain. He was the MD of the Aditya Birla Asset Reconstruction Company. So in ke paas pehle bhi ek ARC mein as a MD work karne ka experience hai. And now he has been appointed as the chief executive of your IDRCL. And if you remember previously we discussed about the appointment of the MD of NARCL. So who was appointed as the MD? Mr. Padma Kumar Nair was appointed as the MD of NARCL. So these are few major uh, appointments related to NARCL, IDRCL. Padma Kumar Nair uh, as an MD appointment pehle hi hui thi. Ab jo new appointment hui hai, wo bhi hai Mr. Pradeep Shah ki as the chairman of NARCL, Mr. Sanjay Jain as the chief executive of IDRCL and Mr. Devakar Gupta as the chairman of IDRCL. So this was the first news which I wanted to discuss. Now let's move on to the second question. It says, identify the financial institution that has approved 500 million US dollars loan to help the government of India 
improve the quality of school education and mitigate the impact of covid on the students learning so this very financial institution it focuses on building prosperous inclusive resilient and sustainable asia and the pacific while sustaining its efforts to eradicate extreme poverty in the region so what they are talking about they are talking about a financial institution which has recently granted a huge amount to india what's the role of this institution it helps in building up the asia pacific region and eradicate poverty in this very region see the objective of the question here is not to ask you about the finance current that which institution has granted how much loan to india for this very purpose the objective here is to identify a institution working globally and the role which it has to play there are various institutions like wto is there the various organizations which are working globally wto world bank imf and uh, asian development bank so you have you must be aware about these institutions what role they have to play yahan hamara question ka objective hi yahi hai ki aapko pata ho is institution ke bare mein aur uske role ke bare mein bahut si institutions alag alag type ke loan alag alag purposes ke liye india ko dete hain so is question ka objective wo loan wo finance current puchna nahi hai here there is a hint lying in the question itself that what role this institution has to play okay so through that role you must be aware about the institution which works related to this area so aisi kaun si institution hai jo asia pacific region ko grow karne mein help karti hai wahan pe poverty eradicate karne mein help karti hai kis major institution ka role hai ye so this is the hint to the quest this is the hint towards the answer towards answering this question and the answer is option e the asian development bank so let's discuss very briefly about this bank so asian development bank has approved this much loan which is around 375 to crores and it's going to help india to build its quality of school education the students learning has been impacted due to covid so this loan is going to support the education sector other than that what is the basic role of the asian development bank see when the idea of asian development bank was conceived in 1960s the objective was to set up a financial institution which will help in the economic growth of asian region so asia jo one of the poorest regions of the world mana jata tha isko develop karne ke liye iski economic growth ensure karne ke liye ye ek financial institution set up ki gayi thi this institution was set up to ensure the growth of the asian area which is one of the poorest regions in the world and uh, when the idea was conceived and this very institution was set up initially it had 31 members okay in 1966 it had 31 members and over the years it has grown and now it has 68 members so around 49 members are the regional members that is they are from the asia pacific region and remaining 19 are from outside region so aisa zaruri nahi hai ki ye sirf asia pacific region ke hi members pe focus karta hai aur bhi jo member nations hai उनकी भी ग्रोथ उन वहाँ पे भी पॉवर्टी इराडिकेट करने पे इनका फोकस है सो so, उन एरियाज की भी ग्रोथ ये इंश्योर करता है सो आउट ऑफ द फोर्टी नाइन मेंबर्स ऑफ द एशिया पैसिफिक रीजन सम ऑफ देम इंक्लूड योर इंडिया नेपाल बांग्लादेश भूटान जापान मलेशिया एंड इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द नॉन रीजनल मेंबर्स तो एशिया पैसिफिक का पार्ट नहीं है बट स्टिल दे आर द मेंबर्स ऑफ एशियन डेवलपमेंट बैंक दे इंक्लूड योर ऑस्ट्रिया Belgium, Canada, France, Italy, Turkey, Switzerland. Okay, so these are few of the members. So the 19 such outside members are there, and 49 Asian Pacific members are there. So now talking about the role of this very bank, the development bank or this very financial institution, it envisions a prosperous, inclusive, resilient, and a sustainable Asia and Pacific. and eradicating the poverty in the region so asia pacific region ko aur stronger banana uski aur growth ensure karna is bank ka role hai aur is region mein jo poverty hai usko eradicate karne pe bhi ye focus karte hain it assists assists the members in numerous ways ye jo member nations hai inko alag alag tarike se support provide karte hain one you have just seen it provides the loans okay so by providing the loans by providing the technical assistance grants equity investment it promotes social and economic development of these regions okay so this way asian development bank as a financial institution plays a major role for its member nations now let's move on to the next question so the third question says 
which firm has recently signed a memorandum of understanding that is a mou with directorate of general training of the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship to train individuals over a period of 3 years in the rapidly growing fintech industry so one of the firms uh, which have been mentioned over here have signed an mou what's an mou it's basically an agreement where both parties agree to something and they uh, basically abide by the contract which they have entered into okay so it's basically a kind of agreement to which two parties enter into and this memorandum of understanding has been signed by a firm with directorate of the general training so it works under the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship this very mou is going to help in uh, giving a boost to the fintech industry how it's because it will provide the training to the individuals in the fintech sector so which firm is being talked about over here which has signed an mou with the directorate of general training the answer to this question is option b paytm paytm or uh, directorate of general training ke beech ek mou sign hua hai let's discuss a bit more about this very new piece so this mou has been uh, signed and it will train around 6000 individuals over a period of 3 years in the rapidly growing fintech industry so different fintech product service related training di jayegi around 6000 individuals ko over a period of 3 years 3 saal tak ye is area mein work karenge jahan alag alag individuals ko fintech related products and services ki training di jayegi fintech related products and services training will be given to these individuals so as i have mentioned paytm has signed an mou with the dgt that is the directorate of general training what is it it works under the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship it's basically an organization that looks into the aspects of vocational training and development of skilled workforce in india so ye vocational training provide karta hai and skilled workforce ki development ensure karta hai when i talk about vocational training it basically uh, involves imparting certain skills providing certain skills which will help you to take up any occupation so there are certain tasks certain occupations which require some technical skill some kind of technical skills so vocational training provides you that kind of skill so that you can take up some technical or artisan work ahead aapko ye kisi occupation ke liye jo specific technical skills chahiye wo deke train karta hai us particular job ke liye that's vocational training now talking a bit more about this very agreement between the two so the selected individuals will undertake a 6 month program designed by paytm 6 mahine ke liye training program paytm ne design kiya hai jo ye individuals uh, जो भी सेलेक्टेड इंडिविजुअल्स इंडिविजुअल्स होंगे वो इस सिक्स मंथ ट्रेनिंग ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम को एग्जीक्यूट करेंगे इट विल इक्विप द ट्रेनिंग विद द फंडामेंटल्स एंड नॉलेज ऑफ द लेटेस्ट फिनटेक प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज सो फिनटेक प्रोडक्ट्स फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज रिलेटेड सबसे पहले तो ट्रेनिंग को नॉलेज दी जाएगी फंडामेंटल्स उसके समझाए जाएगी सम बेसिक्स विल बी टॉट सम नॉलेज विल बी विल बी इम्पॉर्टेंट टू दैम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग दैम बी नॉलेज रिलेटेड टू दैट so they are learning about the basics of fintech industry then the trainees will also go on uh, the professional skills communication sales pitch on the job training so learning ke baad jab inko a basic knowledge impart kar di jayegi to uske sath sath unhe aur bhi type of on the job training di jayegi they will be trained to develop their professional skills communications improve on the sales so on the job training will be given to them so it will be such a experience where they will not just be provided with the learning experiences but they will also get the practical experience by performing similar job okay so the collaboration is part of dgt's flexi mou scheme if i talk about the flexi mou scheme it focuses on learn and earn so you will learn about the skills as well and you will be given an experience in the industrial area as well you will be provided an on the job training so that you can learn actually how the things work आपको सिर्फ सिखाया नहीं जाएगा सिर्फ पढ़ाया नहीं जाएगा आपको एक्सपीरियंस भी दिया जाएगा कि कैसे आपको उस इंडस्ट्री में एक्चुअली वर्क करना है सो इफ वी टेक एन एग्जांपल ऑफ अ पर्सन डूइंग एमबीए, जस्ट लाइक वाइल डूइंग एमबीए, दे डू द इंटर्नशिप्स वेयर दे गेट द प्रैक्टिकल एक्सपोजर टू द थिंग्स हाउ द थिंग्स आर गोइंग टू वर्क सिमिलर इज दिस डिजिटीज फ्लेक्सी एम यू स्कीम हेयर द इंडस्ट्री पार्टनर्स प्रोवाइड एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू द यूथ टू एक्वायर स्किल्स रिलेटेड टू इंडस्ट्री with a job potential through learn and earn approach consisting of mix of theoretical and on the job training aapko theoretical knowledge bhi di jati hai aur on the job training bhi this is what is going to be offered under this very program as well
So Paytm's focus is on creating highly skilled pool of human resources who will contribute to the growth of fintech and digital payments. Specifically, you fintech related training. They will give specifically fintech and digital payment ecosystem related training will be given. So those people will get more skilled in that very job and it will give a boost to your fintech industry. Then the Paytm will also offer employment to the eligible trainees post completion. Course complete करने के बाद Paytm आपको job offers भी देगा. All right. So this step will enhance the quality and number of trained personnel in the fintech industry. Fintech is industry is a growing industry. Okay. So uh, when you are specifically getting trained in that very area, you are getting not only the learning experience, the theoretical experience, but the practical experience as well. So it as a person will train you fully to take up good careers in the fintech industry, and obviously it will give a boost to the fintech as well. So now moving ahead to the last question. So it says DICGC is a wholly owned subsidiary of RBI. It provides. So this is basically a case based question. Let's read it. Okay, DICGC is the wholly owned subsidiary of RBI. It provides the deposit insurance that works as a protection cover for bank deposit holders when the banks fail to pay the depositors. Okay, so they are talking about the role of DICGC over here. DICGC ensures all the bank deposits, be it saving, fixed, current, recurring. Initially, under the provisions of Section 16 of the DICGC Act, insurance cover was limited to fifteen hundred only per depositor for the deposits held by them. So, under DICGC, initially you had fifteen hundred worth of deposit insurance. Okay, in all branches of bank taken together. However, the Act also empowers the corporation to raise this limit with prior approval of central government. So this limit can be increased, and over time it has been increased as well. So, however, the government empowers to raise this limit. This limit has been revised from time to time. So, what's the present limit in India? Although you would be aware about the present limit of DICGC, but to take uh, away more of your time, a case-based question has been made. Okay, so uh, we have to identify the current limit of DICGC. DICGC आपकी deposit insurance provide करता है. It's the institution which uh, it's basically a subsidiary of RBI, an organization that insures your deposit. So if the banks fail to repay your money, certain amount will be repaid by these institutions or this very body. So which body is being talked about over here? It's DICGC. What is the present limit? Of the insurance which it provides, it is rupee five lakh. So five lakh तक का amount अगर आपको bank नहीं repay कर पाता, bank किसी kind of a problem से गुजर रहा है, तो DICGC आपको five lakh का amount जो uh, insured है, वो आपको pay करेगी. So uh, talking about the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation, it's fully owned subsidiary of RBI. It's governed by RBI. and it provides the deposit insurance and credit guarantee so aapne bank mein paisa deposit kiya aapne savings account khola 5 lakh tak ka amount aapka wahan pe safe hai agar bank aapko repay nahi kar paya bank fail ho jata hai bank kisi kind of financial crunch se guzar raha hai to dicgc aapko assure karti hai ki hum log aapko 5 lakh pay karenge iske alawa dicgc credit guarantee bhi provide karti hai ki kisi borrower ne kisi lender se loan liya hai to wo agar रीपे uh, नहीं करता तो उसकी अगर गारंटी ली है तो डीआईसीजीसी वो भी रीपे करेगी सो डीआईसीजीसी प्रोवाइड्स द डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस सो इफ अ बैंक इज गोइंग थ्रू एनी काइंड ऑफ फाइनेंशियल डिफिकल्टी एंड इट फेल्स टू रीपे द डिपॉजिटर्स मनी बैक देन अप टू सर्टेन अमाउंट व्हिच इज प्रोवाइडेड एज अ डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय डीआईसीजीसी एंड इट आल्सो प्रोवाइड्स द क्रेडिट गारंटी व्हिच इज बेसिकली अ गारंटी फॉर अ रेमेडी टू द क्रेडिटर इफ द डेटर डज नॉट रिटर्न द डेट सो अगर डेटर रीपे नहीं करता तो गारंटी दी है अगर डीआईसीजीसी ने तो वो रीपे करेगी व्हेन इट ऑल ऑफ दिस बिगन द अमाउंट व्हिच वाज इंश्योर्ड वाज जस्ट रुपीस 1500 पर डिपॉजिटर ओवर द टाइम इट हैज इंक्रीज्ड इट इंक्रीज्ड टू 5000 रुपीस इन 1968 इट रीच्ड द हाइट्स ऑफ रुपीस 30000 इन 1980स देन इन 1993 वी कैन सी अ ड्रास्टिक इंक्रीज टू रुपीस 1 लाख एंड देन a major rise happened in feb 2020 when it was increased to 5 lakh so currently jo dicgc amount aapka uh, insure karke deti hai wo hai rupees 5 lakhs so this was a case based question and answer to this question is option d 5 lakhs this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up the session thank you so much